Hello, Shane's Photographer here, and another terminology video of what is full frame, what's crop sensor, micro four thirds, and so on and so on. So we're talking about sensor size and what that means. So you might have seen the phrases FX camera or DX com camera. That means a full frame camera or a crop sensor camera. And what is that talking about? Now, full frame seems to be sort of the benchmark because what that is, it's the same size as the film from the cameras of old um, where it was 35 mil. So the, the size of your sensor, I mean, you might have seen it when you take the lens off and when the mirror's up, you can see the sensor and it's the size of a 35 mil film. It's that rectangle size, okay? So that is a full frame sensor. And then you get the ones that are a bit more cheaper. Uh, they're getting a lot more powerful though these days, but just a, a few years ago, crop sensors were considerably cheaper than full frame cameras. And some still are, there's still some good ones knocking around that are still brilliant. They're called crop sensor cameras. And quite basically, what that means is that the sensor is half the size. So a very crude illustration. Imagine this is a full frame sensor and a crop sensor literally is just half the size. So now it's that big. Uh, if you go to a micro four thirds sensor, it might be that big, a bit smaller. And then when you start getting to a mobile phone, the sensor will be about that big. So that's the size difference, give or take, they're all different sizes, but that's the size difference of the sensors these days. So a mobile phone is a small sensor. If you think about it, the sensor's got to sit behind the lens and the lens brings the image onto the sensor. So when you see the lens on a mobile phone, it's a tiny, tiny little lens. So if you had a full frame sensor behind that, and because the lens is so close to the uh, sensor, it's not gonna cope. You're only gonna get a tiny little bit of that image. Now with crop sensor cameras, you may have noticed that they're the same size, the bodies and that, and the mount as well, are the same size as full frame cameras, okay? And you can put a full frame camera on a crop sensor body or a crop sensor, sorry, lens, not camera, lens. And you can put a crop sensor lens on a full frame body as well. The mounts are more or less the same. So if you've got like a Nikon or a Canon or a Sony or whatever, the mounts are the same size. And you're thinking, well, what's the difference? What's a crop sensor lens and what's a full frame lens? So to illustrate it again, if that's your full frame sensor and you put a crop sensor lens on it, the mount, the round thing like that, it's gonna be quite small. So a full frame lens with a mount is gonna cover quite a lot of that sensor image, okay? All right. If you put a full frame lens on a crop sensor, it will still work, but it looks like you've zoomed a bit. You haven't, but it's gonna look like you've zoomed the image because what's happened is the, the rear element of the lens is gonna go like that over the sensor. The sensor is a lot smaller. So all of this, is completely wasted and this and this and this. And what it's doing is basically cutting out the middle. So you're only getting the middle part of the lens, which is fine, you can still do that. And it's like, it's like the effect of zooming. You're not actually zooming. Now you may have heard this phrase, uh, the 1.5 crop, uh, when people say, if you shoot in full frame with a 200 mil lens, it's 200 mil, but if you put it on a crop sensor camera, then it's 300 mil because you get that 1.5 crop. Now don't think, again, this is really good term terminology this, don't think that you're actually zooming by putting a crop sensor lens on, or on, on a crop sensor camera, that it actually zooms the image, it doesn't. All it means is like it's chopping out the middle of what the lens is seeing. So it's like cropping, so say you've got a, an image and you crop it 50%, that's what it's doing basically. It's literally just cutting out the middle of the image which the lens is portraying. So if it's a full frame lens on a crop sensor, there's a lot of that lens that's not being used. It's only 50% of the lens in the middle bit, which is still fine, but it's like it's zooming. Because what it's doing is it's not using all the elements. I can't get this out. It's not using the full image. You're only getting that much image. So it's literally like cutting out a square out of a full frame image okay and obviously the the smaller the the camera or the micro four thirds and so on which are still very powerful but the smaller the the sensor 
the smaller the image. But if you've heard that phrase, the 1.5 crop, or I think with Canon it's something slightly different, like a 1.6 or a 1.3, I can't remember, but that's all that's happening. It's not zooming the image, it's just like cutting out the middle of the image. It's like cropping, okay? Hence the phrase crop sensor. Because the mounts on the cameras are still big, like a 35 mil camera, um, but you're only using 50% of that inside. So the lenses for crop sensor cameras are built that way. The rear element are a lot smaller, whereas the full frame lenses, the rear element is bigger, okay? So I hope this is starting to make sense. What's the difference between a full frame and a crop sensor, okay? Um, on the other end of the scale, there's the really big professional cameras called medium format cameras. Now the sensors of them are absolutely huge. If this is a full frame sensor, then the sensors for those will be like a, a canvas picture on a wall. They are massive, okay? And they're very, very expensive cameras. Now you can't put those lenses on a full frame or a crop sensor camera because the mounts on them are a lot bigger. The rear element of the lens have to be a lot bigger for that because it's got to hit all of that sensor, okay? They are huge and that's what all the, if you see a big billboard sign or high-end professional work, um, the medium format cameras are really big. So they're like 50 megapixel, whatever, but the sensors on those are huge. So hope that makes a little bit of sense as to all this, what's a crop sensor, what's a 1.5 crop, uh, what's a full frame and so on and so on. Now there is a camera out there I just want to warn you about. Um, it's called a bridge camera, okay? Uh, I used to have one myself. They're fine, they're good and they usually have a lens that's stuck on it. You can't take it off. Now it looks like a DSLR. It's about the same size. They've got the grips, the buttons, the flippy screen and all that and a great big lens element on the front and it usually zooms. Some of them have got tremendous zooms on them, absolutely huge. But you can get them for quite cheap, like 100 pound, 200 pound, and they work their way up. And they've all got the gadgets like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all this sort of thing, face recognition, and they're great, okay? They're called bridge cameras. They're not called crop sensor cameras. And there's a reason for that. The sensor inside of those are quite small. They're not very powerful. In fact, they're more or less the same sort of size as a mobile phone, give or take. They, they're difference in size, but they, the end of the scale is quite big. So you've got full frame, You've got crop sensor, and they're both big sensors. Even a crop sensor camera is a big sensor. When you drop down to mobile phone sensors and full frame, it's a huge difference. It doesn't just get smaller and smaller. That's where micro four thirds come in. But bridge cameras, they look big and chunky, but the sensors on them are really, really small. So when it starts getting low light, and when it comes to editing or high ISO and things like that, that's when it's gonna really, really struggle, just like a mobile phone will start doing in difficult situations. They are getting better and better, just like mobile phones are. Um, they managed to extract more power out of these smaller sensors. But in the meantime, the bigger the sensor, and that's where the full frame sensor and the crop sensors start to come in. They're a lot, lot bigger than what you find in smaller, cheaper cameras and mobile phones and things like that. So the sensors are more powerful. Now when it's bright and sunny conditions, it doesn't really matter. Your mobile phone will take a really, really good shot and so will a good DSLR. But it's when it starts getting dark and you're really trying to push the shutter speed and things like that and you're whacking up the ISO, you're trying to pull out the shadows in editing if you're shooting in RAW, I'm gonna to touch on RAW and what that means in another video, then that's where the bigger the sensor comes in. Uh, and then you've got the medium formats, which are colossal, but they are you know, really, really money. Like the, uh, big money, like the Fuji GFX is 6,000 pounds, and that's a cheap um, medium format camera. I think some of them can, can go up to like 100,000 pounds. They're ridiculous, like the Hasselblads and things like that. So on the sensor, it's not just like a, an element that just, that is it, it's the sensor. It's what's in the sensor. It's the megapixels, okay? It's the megapixels. Now you can get older full frame cameras, like I used to have one that was 12 megapixel, and then you can get newer full frame cameras, which are 50 megapixel or 46 megapixel and things like that. So what's the difference? Because the sensor is the same size. Basically, the sensor's the same size, so the lens can hit all of that sensor, okay? So whatever lens you put on there, if it's a full frame lens, it will hit most of that sensor. So that's where you're gonna get all the image. But the sensor itself is made of megapixels, okay? So if it's an older one, like 12 megapixel, it just means there's less megapixels dotted around the sensor. If there's more, if it's like, say, a 46 megapixel camera, or like my camera's a 24 megapixel, they're just dotted across the 24 million megapixels across that sensor. So same with crop sensor cameras. Um, you'll have the same amount, 
24 megapixel. Let me dot it across. Six megapixel, like my wife's cheaper uh, Nikon D70, which still takes astonishing images, but not in low light and things like that. But that's a crop sensor, and that's only got six million megapixels, so they're all spread across the sensor. And then when you start getting to mobile phones and some mobile phones, I think the, S the Sony Nokia Lumia 1020 had 42 megapixels, so 42 million megapixels. Wow, that's huge. But the sensor's really small. So it's got to cram all those megapixels into that tiny little sensor, okay? So I think a lot of cameras these days are like 60, uh, phone cameras are like 16 megapixel or 20 megapixel. So it's just spreading them all across on the size of the sensor. Now let's talk about megapixels, okay? Because you may be swayed like I was years ago, thinking, wow, it's got 40 megapixels, that's amazing, or 20 megapixels. I remember the first electric camera, digital camera I ever bought years and years and years ago, it had seven megapixels, and I was like, whoa, that's amazing, <laughs> seven megapixels. And then there was this megapixel race, and all phones were coming out, and I, I want more megapixels, and so on and so on, and so it was with cameras. Now, megapixels are like little buckets that collect light and depth, okay? So all the light hits those megapixels, they react and they send off a signal along. So they're all like little minions spread across your sensor, okay? Now, you can have an older camera, say, say like one of my old full frame cameras, the Nikon D700, it's an amazing camera. That was 12 megapixel. And then you can have the latest phone, which is say 20 megapixel or 40 megapixels. And you may think, like uh, the Nokia Lumia, 42 megapixels. So you may think, well, the phone is better because it's got more megapixels. Well, let's think of the size of those megapixels, okay? So if you've got a, a bigger sensor camera, like a crop sensor or a full frame, those megapixels are the same size difference as what I've just showed you with the sheet of paper. So imagine you had a full frame camera with 24 megapixels and you had a mobile phone with 24 megapixels, the size difference, each megapixel on the full frame camera is gonna be like a pint glass, and the megapixels on the mobile phone are gonna be like a thimble, okay? Now if you imagine water as light and depth and information and richness of the image, the thimble is gonna fill up pretty quick, isn't it? So the minute it starts getting really dark and it needs to extract more light, the thimbles fill up, but the pint glass of the full frame is gonna fill up a lot more, it's gonna hold a lot more depth and information into that image and it's gonna give it a richer, cleaner image and it's not gonna struggle so much. So that's the difference. So my old Nikon D700 had 20 megapixels and a new bridge camera or mobile phone may have 20 megapixels, but that's like having 12 pint glasses full of water compared to 20 thimbles full of water. That's the difference in megapixel size. I hope that makes sense as an illustration. Okay, so it's not all about megapixels at all. My old Nikon D770 that my wife uses, I mean, we got that for less than 50 pound on eBay. That's got six megapixels, but those megapixels are nice, big and fat megapixels that give a richer image than what you're gonna get from a mobile phone. And the thing with mobile phones, I'm not running them down, honestly, they're amazing now, but most of the time when people look at an image from a mobile phone, you're only looking at an image this big on the back of the mobile phone, okay? Or you might put it on Instagram, where other people will see it on a very small image, and they look great. But when you start blowing those images up and printing them or seeing them on a big screen, that's when you're gonna see the difference, okay? So that's where the bigger the sensor, the bigger the camera, the bigger the print, the bigger the image, and the better it's gonna look. But I'm not knocking mobile phones because they are getting really, really good. And I'm not knocking anyone that's gonna get creative with their mobile phone. But hopefully that will just make sense about sensor size and megapixels if you're slightly swayed thinking, well, it's got loads of megapixels, so it must be really powerful. That's not the case at all. Okay, so that's what, Sensor sizes and the crop, crop factor, what a crop sensor is, what a full frame sensor is, what a medium format sensor is, and the megapixel size as well, okay? It's about that, how big those megapixels are. So I hope that makes sense and just clarifies things. I remember when I first started in photography, I was like, I've bought a crop sensor camera, but what's a full frame? Didn't know, and why is my bridge, bridge camera so rubbish in low light? It's because the sensor inside of it was tiny compared to a nice big sensor on a, a better camera. Now you don't have to spend a fortune to start getting into like crop sensor territory. Now the crop sensors are much bigger than mobile phones, much bigger. And, and you can get crop sensor cameras now, really good ones for quite cheap now. I'm thinking of um, like the Nikon D3300 
or 3400 whatever it was it was an entry level nikon about 200 pounds you can get them for now now that is an amazing powerful sensor okay and you can get those cameras for about 200 pounds and you can get some nice little lenses with that as well um, and that is going to give you a much more powerful uh, you can push the the image much more when low light situations and things like that and that is a huge sensor to have for a couple of hundred pounds and you can get a lot cheaper cameras these days then you start going into the full frame territory and again it just gets bigger and bigger so hope this clears some stuff up about sensor size megapixels and all this confusion i was suckered years ago and i bought a, a phone because it had lots of megapixels thinking it was going to be amazing then i soon realized it's not about how many megapixels you've got it's how big they are and the bigger the sensor the bigger they're going to be so i hope this helps thanks for watching